This week's edition of Inside Oswego Speedway kicks off with Saturday night's outstanding 50-lap Novella Super Modified main event, which featured Michael Muldoon and Ray Graham up there in row number one with the 0-1 of Danny Connors Jr. and Stephen Joy III starting in row number two here in the early going as Muldoon would dart out into the early race lead with Graham tucking into the runner-up spot. With the top two running away with it in the early going, it was Dave Gruel in the number 50 machine making the moves further on back in the field on the high side of the speedway working around the outside of the 22 of pat lavery then the number nine of joya with connor's next in sight but laps later the 55 of keith champagne would bring the yellow lights on with a hard shot to the outside turn to steel keith would be okay but the car obviously was done for the night on the restart joya moves a little bit high dave danzer in auto Sitterly. Your point leader coming into tonight's action moved to the low side, but it was the 47 of Bob Bond and the 68 of Michael Barnes coming together out of corner number two. Lou LeVay coming in late there in the 66 tangles with both cars. Later on, after both cars were refired and back underway, Bond and Barnes would again tangle in corner number two. Barnes, he slides to the high side, keeps the car off of the wall, but he would be done for the night in the number 68. Later on, Muldoon still leading the way. Graham riding in second. Gruel, Lavery, Sitterly moves to the outside in the seven machine around the 01 of Connors. Next, trying to reel in the 22 of Lavery. Down the back, stretching into corner number three. Later on, working down that back straightaway, lap traffic would eventually rear its head as Muldoon goes to the outside of the 83 of Lou LeVay Jr. Things would get very interesting here in the next couple of laps as Muldoon, Graham, Gruel, and Sitterly would all find themselves in lap traffic here down the back straightaway as they close in on the zero of Timmy Snyder and the nine of Joya Gruel trying to work the outside as to is Sitterly coming out of that fourth corner Muldoon ditches to the low side they go three wide in the corner number one Muldoon tries to hang on to that top spot with Gruel right there on the outside coming out of corner number two and down the back straightaway Muldoon with an outstanding move to keep himself out in front. Well, one lap later, this time on the back stretch, they would again go three wide, this time around the zero of Snyder as they roll into corner number three. Well, down the front straightaway, Gruel on the outside appears to have the run he needs to move into the top spot, but the yellow lights would come on as they come up behind the 56 of Hal Latula. The 22 of Pat Lavery would lose the handle, bringing yellow lights on. On the restart, Muldoon would pull away one more time. Sitterly again trying to work the outside of Graham into corner number one. But as they were getting ready to come down for the white flag, the 51 of Muldoon began to sputter. Gruel goes to the outside in that third corner. As they work out of corner number four, you can finally see down the front stretch that indeed Michael Muldoon just two laps away from his first career. Novella Super Modified victory at Oswego Speedway is indeed running out of fuel. Sitterly, Graham and the rest would move to the high side. And with Muldoon on fumes, it was all Dave Gruel running away for the victory, his first of the season, and his first as a Novella Super Modified car owner. Sitterly came home in the runner-up spot ahead of Ray Graham, Dave Danzer, and Sean Goslin rounding out the top five as Gruel pulls his number 50 machine into Turning Stone Resort Casino victory lane he chatted with infield announcer Keith Zare. You know, it's funny how they start to me they're good or bad. I hit my time and I'm really good to make a pass, or I lose some ground. And I uh, lost some ground, but I was able to gain right back up. And I'm not sure if Mike, he drove an awesome race, by the way, but uh, I don't know if he ran out of gas or bust his tires, but I had just enough to get around him, but he might have to go. Awesome nights. I was hoping so. The heat races are tough. A lot of fast cars, a lot of good drivers. Um, new tires on the cars and stuff, so everybody goes pretty good. Starting position means a lot. And in a 12-lap race, it's sort of a lopsided uh, show for the heat race, but gives people an opportunity to get out there and lead a bunch, I guess. But um, yeah, we were, we were pretty good. The got, car got too tight, and uh, you know, it's just hard chiseling through the field, and uh, you know, it's, it's a tough place to race as it is, hard to pass, and uh, I, I don't have too much more to say. I mean, we'll take third place. We're having great problems. Um, this is the second week in a row. Uh, it's hard to race when you don't have brakes, and we were a little too free. So, considering what we have, we'll pick up the really happy with it. 
summer is almost here. And that means the Fast Family Action at Oswego Speedway is ready to go green. Saturday, June 13th, it's round number two of the Shea Concrete Steel Palace Isma Super Series. Featuring the winged Isma Super Modified and the ATQ MRA TQ Midget. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. Don't miss round two of the Shea Concrete Steel Palace Isma Super Series at Oswego Speedway, Saturday, June 13th. Bring the entire family with kids 16 and under free. A great field of Pathfinder Bank small block supers were on hand Saturday night and leading that field to green were the 87 of Matt Magner and the 69 of Mark Castilla. As the field dives down into corner number one, Mike Bond in the 74, the 54 of Camden Proud pulling up to the inside of the 99 of Dennis Rupert out of corner number two as Jack Patrick tries to shoot the gap as well, but trouble further behind as the 98 of Jason Simmons goes around into corner number three, the 28 of Shad Gates involved as well. The 98 of Simmons parked sideways there in corner number three. He would get that car refired and rejoin the field for the restart. And on the restart, it was again Castilla blasting out into the race lead. He got a much better start than he did on the initial start and pulls away coming out of corner number two. Bond in the 74 again filing to the low side as Camden Proud tries to do the same in the 54 going into corner number three, two by two. In the following rows behind, as Proud works to the low side, Bruce comes down as well. Look at Bond in the 74. He jumps to the outside of the 87 of Magner to move into the runner-up spot, then just a lap later. Pulls to the outside of the 69 of Castilla and takes the race lead into corner number three. Bond had not finished the first two events of the season, and as a result, was able to start up front here in the 30 lapper this past Saturday, and he took advantage, darting out into the race lead early on in this one. As second through about 10th, was an amazing battle the rest of the way. Camden Proud pulls to the low side of Manger down the back stretch and into corner number three. He moves into the runner up spot in the step one creative number 54 with Bond way out in front, about a half track lead for the 74 of Mike Bond as he would run away to victory his historic 30th career. Pathfinder Bank, small block super victory at Oswego Speedway more than any other driver. And you can see just how dominant he was on Saturday night as Proud. Magner, Harris, and Mike Bruce charge across the line in the top five. Andrew Shartner, Jack Patrick, and Dalton Doyle were the top eight as Mike Bond climbs out from behind the roll cage. No, I don't get old winning. Getting old working on the car. The thing was running hot. I didn't know if I was going to finish the race or not. I've been having overheating problems. That's about as dominating of a win as we've seen here. Well over half a lap lead. Do you have any idea when you're up front that you're that far ahead? Well, you can watch the photographers and you see them kind of relaxing a little bit. You know, you know, you got a little bit of a lead. But we're just, I was surprised I made it to the end. It was, got up to 250 there at the end. Wouldn't have made it many more laps. But I got to thank my sponsors, Mays, Polynesian, Hotel and Mini Mart, uh, Ronzo there, Millennium Music, and Premier Landscaping. I thank my car owner, Denise Merrill, for giving me a great car to drive. And of course, my crew, for all the hard work and all the FFD guys, everybody in the garage, and especially my wife for putting up with the countless hours that I was in the garage all winter building this thing. Yeah, this is my best finish so far. We had a few good runs going last year. Kind of a heartbreaking end of last year, losing an engine, race of champions weekend, and running third in class and getting the jingle. So I've been frustrated. I was frustrated after practice today, and I just got to thank all my guys for pushing through everything, standing behind me no matter what, to all my sponsors, Step One Creative, Ken's Body Shop, a Swiggle Quality Carpet. All Seasons in, the Oldberry, Ranmar Tractor, Express Auto Care, and Budget Science. We couldn't do it without those guys. And once again, just huge shout out to my guys for standing behind me no matter what, no matter how frustrating this is. We just keep going. Thanks to my mom, my sister, everybody up in the stands, all of our family, friends for supporting me. This is what it's all about. I'm living my dream out here every Saturday night. And as long as I'm doing that, I'm just grateful no matter what for everything. So thanks to all these guys that make it possible for me. This is great for us. Uh, feels pretty good. Um, we had a pretty good car. We started off really good and uh, we got tight towards the center of the race there and got loose towards the end. And it was like the tail of three races for me. But uh, it was great to follow Mike for a while. But uh, I was trying to watch what he's doing, but it was a straightaway gone. I, it was, uh, I couldn't learn anything after that. But uh, I got to thank Denise Merrill, uh, Dan Denny. They put me in this car and I can't thank them enough. Um, all my sponsors, uh, I mean, I, I can't do it without these guys, and I appreciate everything they do for me. 
summer is almost here. And that means the Fast Family Action at Oswego Speedway is ready to go green. Saturday, June 13th, it's round number two of the Shea Concrete Steel Palace Isma Super Series. Featuring the winged Isma Super Modifieds and the ATQ MRA TQ Midgets. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. Don't miss round two of the Shea Concrete Steel Palace Isma Super Series at Oswego Speedway, Saturday, June 13th. Bring the entire family with kids 16 and under free.